the surgical simulator will stop some bleeding and be done. Great. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to our Google Hangout, CUNY TV, Science and You. Um, we're chatting now uh, with Dr. Martin Olson. He's in Tennessee. Um, and Dr. Olson, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, um, and how you're using Google Glass. Well, I'm professor of obstetrics and gynecology at East Tennessee State University. And as that role, I teach residents and students. I have designed a surgical simulator named Surgical Chloe. And when the Glass Explorers program came out, I thought this is a wonderful tool to combine with the simulator and give the students or residents a chance to teach themselves by recording their own activities in a hands-free fashion. So you have Chloe Glass, right? Chloe Glass is the Google Plus site that discusses all the work we've done with Glass and the simulator. Right, and she is, I guess, how would you describe Chloe Glass? Is she a mannequin, a Actually, Chloe robot? Glass is the website. Surgical Chloe is the uh, surgical simulator. So ah. it's a full body, high fidelity surgical simulator, which means it looks like a human. Uh, it bleeds when you cut it. It's got heart sounds. It's got lung sounds. It's got a pulse. So it has lots of the things that a human being has. It gives students and residents the chance to work on a simulator and challenge themselves in a way that they can't really do with patients. And we can, we can stress a student, we can create a fire in the room, and you can't do that with a real patient. You can't uh, put them in that type of a stressful situation. So there are certain things simulation does that can't be done with real patients. So when did you get the glass, and when did you start using it in your, um, in your teaching? June, June of this year. So that was when uh, they became available, May, June, and I got mine in New York City and then put it to work fairly quickly. Uh, with four different ways. One is to just put it on myself and then run the tape and see how I teach and critique myself. Another way was to put it on somebody doing a simulated surgery and let them check their own technique. Uh, one of my favorite ways is to put it on the simulator and then the students or residents look at themselves taking a history and they can critique their their skills with patient interaction. And finally, just stick it on the learner, and you can want, you can see their anxiety. You can feel their anxiety better when you're seeing the process through their own eyes. So you're seeing it from like a first person's. Per, per, I mean, this is like um, a perspective that you would not have normally seen. Oh, correct. The eyes of the patient perspective. There's no other way to get that than to stick something on a person's face or a simulator's face. So that can you show? Yeah. yeah. Can you show us a demo? Can you give us a little demo? On the Chloe Plus site, there is a uh, fire and labor delivery room segment, and then there's a YouTube segment that's about three minutes, which I took to Russia on that trip we talked about. Yeah. And so uh, either of those would be available. And can you just go through it? So um, we would look, we, we probably will show one of those. Like what is happening in the delivery room, and how are they using glass, and um, what are you hoping that your students are learning from that? So the uh, fire in the labor delivery room starts uh, first. The students and residents never know what I'm going to do to them because that's like life. When you walk into a patient's room, you don't know what the patient's problem is going to be. So in this particular scenario, they know that the patient's in labor. They go into the room, and I'm in there playing the role of the patient's husband, and I'm not terribly bright. So they're taking a history. They're doing everything right. The patient's progressing rapidly. And then the patient's husband, me, uh, gets so excited that I light up a cigar and start a fire. And we actually have a uh, party smoke machine which sends out vapor so you can see the smoke coming up in the back of the room. And they have to evacuate the room and then they go into the hallway because that's what's available if they deliver the patient in the hallway. And then we go into the debrief room and we talk about the uh, scenario and what they did right and what they did better the next time. And so at, at this point, in this video, who's wearing the glass? The simulator wears it the whole time. And so we are now seeing it from the patient's point of view. That's right. This happens to be a different simulator. This is the Noel simulator, which is a birthing simulator. Well, then, I mean, if you pay close attention, you can see the simulator's chest rise and fall as it's simulating breathing. So you, you do get a very realistic appearance of what life might be like from the view of a patient. And why is that important, you think, for a teacher, for a professor, to teach that perspective, especially for medical students who are going to be dealing with patients on a, on a daily basis? Well, medicine is science, but medicine is also an art. And part of the art is making sure your patient feels nurtured and well cared for. And by 
allowing the students to see how they look to a real patient, they start seeing things about themselves that they want to change. So for me to say, oh, I wish you'd make better eye contact with that patient, they may believe it, they may not believe it. When they look at themselves and they evaluate themselves and say, I could have made better eye contact, then they do it. And these are young adult professionals who want to be great doctors, and so giving them an extra tool to help them become great doctors just enhances the process of their learning. What kind of impact you, do you think Google Glass can have on um, the medical profession and also teaching medicine? Well, as far as medical profession, it is its key newness is its hands-free nature. So communication can now occur without the use of one's hands. So let's imagine that an emergency medical technician is out in the field somewhere handling a problem that he or she's never seen before. Let's say it's a vaginal breach delivery. And they don't know how to do it. They've never done one. They may have done a simulation, but they need help. Well, they got the glass on. They contact somebody that's experienced. This experienced person walks it through it, seeing exactly what they're seeing, and suddenly the patient get better care. So the chance for Google Glass to work in extending expertise out into the field, I think, is dramatic. It has potential for patients, too. The little screen is brighter than the ambient light. And so a patient that's visually impaired at night might be able to use this screen and be able to see a little bit better at night. So this could really also have an impact on um, areas where maybe a doctor might not be able to travel to to help the medical um, professionals in like Africa, for instance, or in war tour countries where it's almost impossible to get like a team of doctors to um, hard to reach areas? Yeah, I, I think the potential for international medicine assistance is very significant. I would agree with that statement. So, okay, and we're seeing a guy over there. Is he going to help us out with something? Yes. <laughs> that is uh, Chris Brown, a, uh, a student Hi, who plans to be a physician. He's a pre med student, so why don't I put these on? Yes. Mm -hmm. We'll need to, uh, one of us needs to invite. So, want me to invite someone? Yes, invite Martin Olson. Invite you. <laughs> That's right. And the Martin Olson you want to invite has a little. Uh, a little uh, Lego doctor. The little um, little Lego doctor. I'm assuming it is this. Is this the Lego doctor? Let's see if this is you. Is that you? It takes a few minutes for me to get invited. Glass, so there should be an invitation. Unless, I, unless I just invited the wrong Martin Olson. <laughs> you want to invite me? <laughs> well, I don't seem to have anything on my screen to do in, an invitation. Oh, you don't? Okay. Let me okay. see. Um, the rest of them I might be missing that says invite somebody else. Oh, okay. Actually. Toolbox. Where's the toolbox? Hangout toolbox, very top. Hangout toolbox. On the left side? Yeah. It doesn't say. Yes, doesn't say. Invite somebody. Okay, I think I might. I think I found you. Nope. Try again. O L S E. I don't see the um, Lego doctor. I seem to or the Lego avatar. Excuse me. There's one without an avatar. And you can't. You're not able to add me. Uh, let's, well, let's see here. I don't. Those, you only the Google Glass only has ten different people, so you're not one of the ten that's on no. there. No, I wish. <laughs> let's see. Martin. I seem to have lost you too. So. Oh, okay. But uh, well, I still see you. Unless this is you. Let's see if this is you. The screen and push to the back. How would I see if we can try behind uh, on that one? Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. So 
So you're not getting any of those invitations that I'm sending? Because I can even do it via your email address, that Marty38, right? Marty0 3800 is the yeah. plus one. So I'm sending one to that email address. There we go. Invite us to a video call. Yeah, that's what came up and then went away. Yeah, it's supposed to come up on the glass, is the thing. Let's make sure that the Wi Fi is working. Yep, it's connected. Take a picture of it and show you what it looks like so you've got the proper icon. So can you see that icon on there? It's sort of a little guy in a white coat with holding up a sword, which is supposed to be a scalpel. Hi, I don't see it. Are you, you're screen sharing it? Pick it up a little closer towards the eye. There's the eye. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, we did. I, there is that person. I share. I invited that one. You didn't get it? No. Oh. Right, okay. I'm going to try it again. You're at the bottom, yep. Submit. Okay. I just sent another invite. Hmm. Nothing, huh? Nothing. That's odd. I have to complain to Google, I guess. Well, I know. Well, that's why, that's why you're testing it. No, because I'm actually working through hmm. the cell phone. Because when we were at Google yesterday, they were having problems with connectivity, too, that we had to. Right. Uh, I wonder if we sign out and I invite me. And then we try to invite you. Oh, like you, you start the broadcast? Like you go, oh, right, and then you invite me, and then you invite um, Chloe, right? Yeah. Let's try that. Okay. All right, let's give that a try, and then uh, we'll hopefully chat again here shortly. Yeah. Cross our fingers. <laughs> we'll be right back.